So we all know about the Charlotte Hornets and the Lakers potential trade. Uh, now, we do got reports that the Charlotte Hornets have finally decided to start taking calls on some of their veteran players. And, of course, this opens the door for the Lakers to potentially get a deal done. Uh, now, obviously, they want to unload their veteran level guys uh, there have been connections to pj washington as well he's been mentioned in trade rumors for the last like couple years now right uh, because the idea is that charlotte they need to pay him uh, they gotta pay bridges uh, they're very likely uh, if they did do that and you're stuck with Gordon Hayward, you're stuck with Terry Rozier, like you're basically a team that's a play-in team at best, and you're well over the salary cap at that point. So obviously they're looking to unload Gordon Hayward, unload Terry Rozier, uh, you know, Kelly Oubre, whatever they can get for him. And then maybe PJ Washington is a piece that they would throw on uh, to the Lakers as instead of like giving up draft picks, because any team to take on Gordon Hayward is likely going to want a pick attached. Uh, same thing with Terry Rozier. You can make an argument with the season he's had. Teams are probably going to want an attached pick to uh, any kind of Terry Rozier deal because he's got a hundred million over the next four years. Uh, so obviously there is the core inherent trade. The Lakers are very likely going to try to get some pieces from that trade. Uh, Terry Rozier has been a target mention. Again, maybe they get Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier. Maybe they, you know, do a, a big trade with Russell Westbrook, right? That was kind of the intentions uh, in, in the summer uh, where the sort of trade speculations first picked up with the Hornets because at that point they were planning on doing uh, the Miles Bridges extension. Miles Bridges ended up doing what he did and that kind of just ruined all the conversations. Well, now they're back in the same boat. They're, you know, third in the tank race for Victor Wembanyama, so it would make sense for them to clear it off. And the Lakers' one advantage that they have that other teams just don't is the ability to clear all of their players, all of their salaries. And we've talked about on this channel several variations of the trade. But there's one thing that I haven't talked about that could actually be very beneficial for the Lakers, and I mean take everybody. So here would be a, again, not saying that this will happen. Um, it's very likely than not something that won't happen just because there's so many moving parts, but it's not, it's, it's happened. I mean, the, the Timberwolves deal involved like eight or nine guys. Uh, you know, some of the, a lot of the, the trades this off season, especially, uh, uh, were a combination of seven, eight, nine, ten guys uh, going out and, and to various teams and locations. So it's not completely far-fetched because it's only one team, right? It would just be a Laker-Hornets yeah, even swap, even trade. But here's the breakdown, uh, and just like to show you that the money matches and everything works, right? Uh, and then we'll, we'll dive into it individually. But as you see here, basically what would go to Charlotte would be Russell Westbrook, Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker, Kendrick Nunn, Damian Jones, the Lakers, they would get Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, Kelly Oubre, uh, Mason Plumley, and P.J. Washington. So it would be an even five players for five player swap. Uh, you're giving up, you know, center for center. Now look, Charlotte, they don't want the players, right? They're taking, they, they want to take the Lakers, Russell Westbrook, or they want to take Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, whomever. They want those players because they're expiring contracts. So it's, here, you take all the pieces, you take all the long-term salary, we want the expiring salaries, and it's a win-win for everybody. And with this deal, maybe because you're getting so much, I wouldn't mind if the Lakers gave up a first. Because, I mean, really look at this for a second. You're getting Gordon Hayward, yes, that it's tough because you know he's still got another year on his contract, uh, but... One thing he does have is because he has another year, he becomes a lot more valuable next season, right? So you could always flip him in the offseason, but if he's healthy, he could end up being the best fit next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. But you also get that three-level point guard level scorer. Yes, I know it's an undersized guard, but you're literally getting rid of all of your guards, so it makes sense. The only one you'd have left is Dennis Schroeder, which is fine because Rozier would likely start. Schroeder would be your backup six men, so you're good there. Uh, Kelly Oubre just 3 and D style shooting guard, small forward. Uh, you get Plumlee, which the Lakers are in the market for a center. 
Uh, so that would be huge. And then you get P.J. Washington. So you get a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, and a center. You basically get an entire lineup. And, of course, the big question is, well, chemistry, team building, stuff like that. Well, the, you're basically getting, you know, the Charlotte Hornets starting five outside of, you know, LaMelo Ball, which, again, all of these guys are available. All of these guys the Hornets want to move off of. And instead of finding several deals and having to give up assets, the Lakers could just solve all your problems in one quick swoop. Here you go. Win-win for both sides. The Lakers, they get their center. They get their small forward, their shooting guard. They get the wing depth. They get the three-point shooting. They get an athletic big man that could come in and play nice. Also, Plumlee would be insurance because very likely you're going to lose uh, Thomas Bryant. But diving into to this, and again, the Hornets, we don't really need to go too much into the Hornets side because the Hornets don't want the players. This is just about unloading the salary. Maybe if you're the Lakers, if you have to give up a first, I wouldn't mind it. It would have to be a protected first because you're taking on a lot of salary. But you are essentially getting five rotation guys that you could all re-sign with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So you have these guys for the next several seasons and you're probably in a position to be a contender and win a championship. So I wouldn't mind this. You're basically upgrading all all of your guards. You're basically going five for five swap. Only their five is much much better than our five. So that 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 would be the the benefit for the Lakers. But diving into obviously Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, because that's sort of the selling point for this. Uh, Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward are the the long term salaries. Now Terry Rozier, I think, would be an absolute solid fit. I mean, he's basically wish Kyrie, right? Or you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody said in the comments one time Kroger brand uh, Ky- uh, Kyrie, which I thought was funny. But basically, he's Kyrie liked, right? He's a guy, three level scorer that can shoot the ball, play on the ball, off the ball, get to the rim, shoot the mid range. He, he's he's a very effective player. Now he is having a rough season this season, but. There's a lot of factors that went into this. One, the Hornets are terrible, and he's kind of like the only guy that could just go and get a bucket, especially with LaMelo Ball out pretty much the entire season. He's played 22 games this season. Um, But he was, for a long stretch, the only guy. Like, if you watch the games, teams were double-teaming him, and sometimes cases triple-teaming him, trying to keep the ball out of his hands, because he was literally the only guy that could create and go score uh, for a good amount of games. So I think a lot of that is that. I think a lot of it is just it's a bad team. He's asked to do just he's basically asked to be the guy. And he's not the guy. He's not supposed to be the best player on a championship team. It's why they've won only 13 games. Like Charlotte has a bunch of really good pieces, but they're not first, second, third best players on a team. They are, you know, your third, fourth, fifth, sixth best guys on a team. And guess what? The Lakers have a first and second best guy on the team. They don't need a first and second best guy. They need a third, fourth, fifth, sixth best guy, which is why the Charlotte deal would make so much sense. You get the wing depth, you get the shooting, you get the scoring, you get everything. Gordon Hayward, yes, it sucks to to with his injury history. Again, Gordon Hayward is Austin Reeves all grown up. He is he is the 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 adult version of Austin Reeves. He is the final evolved form, right? Like Austin Reeves is Charmander. Gordon Hayward is Charizard, right? Like, that's what he is. He's the Swiss Army knife that could shoot, that could pass, that could do everything. Problem is, he's closer to Ash's Charizard that can't really play, right? He doesn't really want to fight, right? Like, for the for the fans out there. But, um, on a serious note, like, no, he's a guy that does get injured repeatedly. Uh, and it's very unfortunate. But if he is healthy, especially come playoff time, he could be huge. Guy that can hit, that can hit and knock down the shot. Guy that can facilitate, guy that can you can run your offense through, solid defense, solid everything. He's just a well-rounded basketball player. Um, he's also a guy that again next season would be a thirty million dollar expiring deal, which then you could be in the Russell Westbrook conversation again, especially if you don't have to give up another first. So now going into next season, let's say you need a piece or two, right? Or, you know, let's say in the offseason, something like, I don't know, Kyrie wants to come or something like that, right? Well, now you got Gordon Hayward's contract that you could use and also throw and attach, you know, a first or a couple firsts or whatever, whatever you got to do, a pick swap, whatever. And now you can go get another piece or another star or whatever because Gordon Hayward's contract would be large enough to match 
most star contracts. So Gordon Hayward could be a huge benefit for a multitude of reasons, right? And worst case scenario, he just falls off. Or you could re-sign him because you'd have his bird, right? So like, let's say he is really good. And let's say, yeah, he is having injury history and he is having issues, but he's still giving you, you know, 40 games a season. And it's like, man, when he's if when he's healthy, this team is really good. It's clicking. Maybe you re-sign him for, you know, $8 million a year or something like that, right? Just give him something to where it's justifiable, where he's not getting paid, you know, $30 million a year. Uh, it's about what you're getting as a whole. Like, yes, you're taking on $150 million in salary, but you're getting several other players, right? You're getting... A center, which the Lakers are clearly in the market for a center. You're moving off of Damian Jones in his two years, which Charlotte wouldn't care. It's only $2 million. Not a big deal. We're taking on $150 million. You'll be okay. Um, he's a guy that you could re-sign. I don't think he'd cost much again. So you re-sign him. You keep him long-term. He gives you Thomas Bryant insurance because Thomas Bryant has been playing so well. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep him. So you need a quality center that can play next to Anthony Davis or, you know, play a backup Anthony Davis or whatever, right? Well, Blumley is that guy. He's got good athleticism. He's a solid defender. He's a big body. He's got toughness. Uh, he, could, he could stretch the floor a little bit. You know, like he's, he's he would be a nice, solid, con- contributing big man and a guy that I really think could, could really help. I mean, and again, the Lakers really are looking for another big man this season and for the future, right? If you have Plumlee and you have Anthony Davis, at least you got two guys, right? At least you got two guys that, that could be your starting centers, and then now you're just trying to find that other guy or that other piece, right? You probably could keep winning Gabriel. I don't think winning Gabriel is going to demand a bunch of money. He's a guy that you could probably keep around, so you could have winning for like the small ball, uh, but Plumlee could play next to winning, could play next to AD. You know, if you can keep Thomas Bryant, then still, you keep keep Thomas Bryant. You know, if you can figure out a way to keep him, sure. Keep Thomas Bryant. Now you got, you know, Bryant, Plumlee, AD, you know, winning for the next several seasons. That's a pretty good rotation. Or if you let winning go, uh, or if Bryant leaves, you still got PJ Washington as your four. So, like, you could have your fours be, like, let's say you do keep Thomas Bryant, right? Like you could have your 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 fours and fives be uh, you have your big man rotation of PJ, uh, you know Plumley, AD, Thomas Bryant. That's pretty solid. LeBron can play the four at times, right? Like there you go, right? Like that's that's a pretty good position for the Lakers to be in. And I just think Plumley it's kind of the added piece, gives you that center, gives you that piece that you could have long term. Again, you get you're getting a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, power forward, center. You're basically getting an entire new roster with this deal. And the beauty is, it wouldn't cost you the farm. You're not going to have to give up both unprotected first round picks. You can make an argument, even with as many pieces as you're getting, the Lakers shouldn't have to give up anything. But I think, again, if you have to give up a first, I'd probably give up a first for this deal. I, I, I would be reluctant, right? Because there are a lot of questions. You got all this long-term money. You know, how how can can you know Gordon Hayward stay healthy? Can Terry Rozier can he stay uh you know and kind of pick himself back up and get back to like the guy he once was? Uh, is PJ Washington worth the money that you're gonna have to pay him? We'll find out. You know, Kelly Oubre, are you gonna keep him? He can't really shoot that well. Like these guys aren't that great to where it's like, man. This is, but they're good enough with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. If you took the Charlotte Hornets right now and you add Anthony Davis and LeBron James, that's probably the best team in the league. Like with just those role guys. Because again, they just don't have what it takes to win because they're not your first, second, third, fourth option. They're supposed to be your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh best option. And when you have that, and you have those star level guys, it makes everything easier for everybody else. And everybody else can be more productive and be good. Like Terry Rozier isn't Kyrie Irving, right? So like he's not supposed to be your number one guy. I mean, Kyrie isn't he has proven that he's not even a number one guy, right? So, you know, if he can't be, you can't expect Terry Rozier to be, right? Like Terry Rozier is, you know, again, your third guy. He's like your guy that's just there just to go score. Go get me a bucket. And that's what exactly what he'd be on the Lakers. Plumlee is a guy that gets to just play his role. Be aggressive, be high energy, rebound, you know, get putbacks, defend, 
all of those. Like everyone would play the exact same roles they are playing right now. The only difference is you got LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It's perfect, right? And then, of course, you get P.J. Washington, which is the real prize. He's still young enough for the future. Uh, he's still a guy that you, you could have for the next seven, eight plus years, be your starting power forward. Um, you know, you got him and Max Christie as like the building blocks for the future. Uh, like that could be pretty solid. If you wanted to, you could even package like, you know, say the Knicks want Kelly Oubre, right? Like maybe swap Kelly Oubre for, you know, whatever, Evan Fournier and, and Cam Reddish. And now you got Reddish, uh, Washington and, 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 uh, you know, Max Christie for the next several seasons as like your, your core building blocks. Like that's not bad. You got your starting shooting guard, your starting small forward and your starting power forward for the next 10 years. Like that's, that's a good position to be in if you're the Lakers, because you do also have to worry about post LeBron post AD could be a solid win for everybody. But you even like, whatever, even if you are keeping these guys, of course you could add a third team, fourth team, whatever. Right. But the idea is just Straight up, Lakers, Hornets. Because when you start adding other teams, things get really complicated, right? You know, the the, the saying, uh, three teams is where trades go to die. Like, that's usually how it goes because there's always one team. And it happened to the Lakers last season. They were supposed to get Cam Reddish. All was done. They're getting ready to submit the paperwork. And then all of a sudden, the Knicks want another first. And it ruins everything, right? Like, that's usually how it goes. But um, regardless, even if you just get Kelly Oubre and P.J. Washington, they're two sizable wings you know uh washington can play the three or the four Ubre could play the the three or the two uh same thing with gordon hayward could play the three or the two got interchangeable parts you got defensive guys you got guys that you know i can give you 20 on any given night right now all of a sudden you got you go from like basically three maybe four guys that on any given night can give you 20 to like seven guys like, Rozier is averaging 20 this season. Kelly Oubre is averaging 20 this season. P.J. Washington's had plenty of 20-plus point games. Gordon Hayward's, a, you know, a, still a career-like 20-point-a-game guy. Uh, and he could go get you 20 on any given night, right? Like, you're, you're literally getting all these guys. Man, you still have LeBron James. You still have Anthony Davis, right? You, you'd still have Austin Reeves. Like, guys, like, I just, I just think you're in such a good spot. You still have Dennis Schroeder, Thomas Bryant. Right, like you're you're the you're probably the deepest team in the league if you do something like this. You got your wing depth, you got your scoring, you got your you know your three uh three level score. You got you got youth, you got athleticism, you got defense, you got there you go, you're good to go. And it's not even just about this season. Like let's say it's not the perfect camp. Like let's say it's a little clunky, you know, with LeBron and AD. Nobody's really gelling. You know, let's say okay, we get into the playoffs and it, we lay an egg, right? It's not even just about the season. It's about the next several seasons. Well, now, even if you did lay an egg, you got an entire offseason, you got an entire training camp, and now you got an entire preseason to get all these guys to work for the Lakers. Like, that's good. This is your team now with LeBron James and Anthony Davis for the next several seasons. And I think that this is a solid team. Now you work out how to get Max Christie, Austin Reeves, you know, Thomas Bryant, when he gave like the rest of the core guys. You're basically unloading all the scraps, all the pieces that like this, half of them aren't even playing for you. You're unloading basically all of your scraps for these five guys. There's no way you can do that and tell me that the Lakers wouldn't be the best team in the league. Absolutely. The Charlotte Hornets, I mean, these guys by themselves without LeBron James and Anthony Davis have won 13 games. And they and there's other games that they probably should have won. Stuff like that. Like, you add these guys to the Lakers, the Lakers might be, you know, what, 40 and 2 right now or something like that, right? Like, seriously, because you you have the, I mean, health is always an issue. Health is always, you know, there's a lot of factors to go into it. But think of all the close games the Lakers have played right now. You don't think these guys over, like, Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, Damian Jones, who isn't playing, right? Like, uh, you don't think these guys would give you more production than that? Like, the only guy you'd really be losing that was, like, super productive was Russell Westbrook. But you're getting more than that through committee. And you're getting basically all of your needs. You're getting all of your size. You're getting all of your wins. You're getting all of your scoring. You're getting all of your shooting. You're getting all of your depth. Like, you know, are are these guys, like, elite? You know, you got five 40% three-point shooters? No. But they're still good enough. They're better than the guys we have right now. Right? And, like, so why not? Go get these guys, 
you solve your your you solve most of your holes. And that's my biggest concern. That's what I want the Lakers to solve are their holes. And I think Charlotte is the one is one of the few teams, if any, that really could just solve everything all in one swoop. And I think this is this is the home run deal. This is the home run trade that I think really would put the Lakers over the top and really give the Lakers what you need. You know, you give me Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, Kelly Oubre, PJ Washington, and Mason Plumley. You got that that could be, you know, LeBron and AD could take a night off. These five could start and you could still win. And you still have, like I said, Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, Troy Brown. Uh, you know, you're going to have Mason Plumley. You're probably going to have, you know, Kelly Oubre or, or Gordon Hayward coming off the bench. Like, you're 10 to 15 guys deep now. Like, legitimately. I think you can win a championship. But those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass a question on you. I'd love to hear yours. Do you agree? Do you disagree? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comment section.